Good evening, ladies and gents. This is Daenerys the Human, and welcome to this Games God edition of Medieval 2 Total War. And today, we're going to look at how to improve the late era gun units like the Musketeers and the Arquebusiers. The gun units are often frustrating, randomly turning the formation to try and find the right ground, just standing, doing nothing, or shuffling back and forth. Pretty much anything except actually shooting. To fix the problem, we need to take a look at how the unit works. And all musketeers and arquebusiers essentially work in the same way, whilst handgunners are a special kind of crazy to be honest, but whether you're using a Janissary or Spanish musketman, the Cossack arquebusier or the Sudanese gunners, which are a type of arquebusier by the way, they essentially work in the same manner. I will say at the start though there isn't going to be a perfect solution for this, not unless you want to do a load of animation work. If you want to do that, there is a full guide in the Total War Center, and I'll put a little link in the description below. But unfortunately for us, we're not going to get something quite as perfect as this here today. But I'll show you what we can do to make it work just that little bit more efficiently. Here we have then a couple units of Archbishops and a couple units of the Musketeers. Now, of course, we do have them in two lines here because the chaps at the back are in skirmish mode, and the lads at the front are not. They will fire in different ways as a result of that little button there, so it's worth bearing it in mind. Now, as we await for the Frenchies to approach, you might well notice that we're in ranks of three. That is the default setup for this formation, although we will have a little look at uh, how it might change if we put it in ranks of two a little bit later. So, as these guys are getting ready to shoot, there we go. You can see they've just taken their first shot there, and they're going to do a little bit of a dance, a little bit of a jig. Now, they're going to go to the back and reload, but until they are all in line, these guys won't shoot. So, there is a little bit of a, a speed issue with regards to this, and there's another issue with it as well, but we'll come to that in a moment when it becomes relevant. Now, we've got the Archibusiers here as well. As I said uh, just a minute ago, really, these lads work in exactly the same way as the Musketmen. They're just a slightly earlier version. Their range isn't so good, which is why they've only just started shooting now. But we do have the Scots Guard coming in before too long, and that brings us to one of the more significant problems with these lads. So there we go. So these guys are now starting to take a bit of fire. And as these guys take missile hits, they will gradually just fail to shoot. The problem is they need this full line at the front to shoot in unison. You can see here they're struggling to reorganise themselves. So when they get hit by missiles, these guys basically are rendered useless. Here we are then with the skirmish mode instead, and they'll do things slightly differently. The lads at the front are going to take their shots, not really as in unison as they might otherwise do. However, I do think it's a more elegant system, because once they've taken their shots, they'll kneel down, and the lads behind them will take their shots over their shoulders. It proves to be about the same sort of speed, although anecdotally people do suggest it's quicker. Nonetheless, nonetheless, what we also want to have a look at is the Archbishops over here, who are taking the odd little pop from the Scots Guard, I'm hoping. And now you should find on skirmish mode they don't really get as disrupted, because, 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 we can see here that they just randomly shoot. They're not really trying to wait for everyone to shoot in unison. And thus, the odd people being picked up by arrows doesn't really interrupt them as much. So for me, I do really prefer the skirmish mode overall. Naturally, we want to compare if this skirmish mode is actually better in practice or not, so we've got ourselves a little experiment. We're going to put the lads on the left in skirmish, and the lads on the right will not be. So as we put on fire at will, we'll be able to compare the two of them. Now, anecdotally, a lot of people do say that the skirmish mode is a better rate of fire. But from my experience, and I've run this experiment lots of times at this point, they do seem to pretty much be about the same speed as each other. In fact, they get virtually the same amount of kills as well. So the second shot, they're marginally ahead, actually, for the non-skirmishing unit. But it's basically just a matter of variance. Essentially, they pretty much are as quick as each other. And here comes the third set of shots there, pretty much simultaneously. The far by rank formation is a little bit clumsy looking, and of course the minute they get hit by any arrows, well that little dance just stops entirely and they don't even bother shooting. I like the skirmish mode better, I like how they kneel down and then they start taking their rifle shots over the shoulders when they reload. That one has promise, but it's just a little bit messy right now. So let's see if we can go into the files and fix this up. 
As with any mod in on Medieval 2 Total War, we do need to unpack the files first and of course change the preference file here to make sure all of our changes stick. If you need to do that, I do have a guide on that. There is a link in the description below. The file we need is inside the data folder and from there we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom until we find this file here, export underscore desk underscore unit. Once inside the file then we're going to use the control F function to search for the musketeers and we'll flip through the Cossacks until we get to the musketeer unit, there we go. And from here the main thing we want to look at is this line here, the attributes. Some of these attributes are pretty common and uninteresting and a bit like this one over here, not really any interest to us today. But what we want to bear in mind is this here, the gunman, which sounds like it could be important. But from my testing, I can't find any discernible impact it has on the game, whether we get rid of it or keep it on there. So we're going to ignore that one for today. But what we do want to look at are these two here. And to start off with, we're going to remove gunpowder unit because this has a very big impact indeed. So let's save that up and let's see how this looks. Here we are then back in Le Village. And of course, we have ourselves two units of musketeers. The ones on the left here are in skirmish mode, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. As you'll notice when they start shooting this time, we have all three rows shooting. And you might be thinking, Thomas, this is perfect. It's just what we want. But notice there's no reloading going on. It's just shoot, shoot, and shoot again. And this is basically what happens when you remove that gunpowder unit line. They start doing that. Now, if you leave them off skirmish, they will go back to doing their little shuffle dance like we're seeing here. So it's an interesting one. The skirmishing unit are now just shooting and not even reloading. They're demonic and will crush pretty much anything that comes anywhere near them. This, in many ways, is getting towards what we want, but is clearly a little bit too extreme. Whereas this, well, this is still the same old nonsense it was before. Back inside the files then, and we're just going to add that old attribute back in there. Make sure we've got our spacing correct. This time we're going to get rid of fire by rank instead. So let's save this up and let's reload once again. Back inside the game then, let's have a little look at what they do this time. Without the shooting by rank, what are they going to do? Well, as you can see, they're both acting like the skirmisher unit now. Them shooting not in unison, but they will, as you can see here, start to kneel down and allow the second rank to start shooting. So it's an interesting little mix here. Basically, that removes that slightly weird wobbly dance they do where they shuffle between the lines. Now, this is interesting because between those two, we've had some interesting results, but maybe not quite the perfect one yet. As you might well imagine, then this time I'm going to remove both of them from the list. We're going to save it up and try a third time. Having removed fire by rank and gunpowder unit, both units are now doing the same thing. They've got their lines of free, all of them shooting, basically no reloading going on, and well, the impact is very, <laughs> very, very clear indeed. They get so much fire off. These guys barely started to run off by the time the enemy had routed. So um, this is this is overpowered, and to be honest, I don't like the fact that they're not actually bothering to reload anymore. What we need is something in the middle here. Something where they uh, yeah, they get in proper rank, they get information, they kneel down, they reload, but not quite so demonic as this, but slightly more efficient than what we've seen so far. Back inside the files then, and I'm going to add gunpowder unit back in here, because personally I don't like how they just start shooting and they don't really bother reloading. I like the little animation where they kneel down and they shoot over their shoulders as they reload. So I'm gonna keep that in, but I'm not going to keep the fire by rank. I'm gonna leave that one out because I like the fact that they will stick with that kneeling animation this way without running away like skirmishes. Going with the second option we tried though doesn't leave us without a few problems. For one, they didn't really fire in unison and that can sometimes make it look a little bit messy. So we're going to have a little play with the formation here and try and make it a bit more efficient. So we have ourselves the number on the end. This is how many ranks that the unit will have by default. So I'm going to change that down to two. I'm also going to change this bit here. This is basically how far set out the units are. So I'm going to make it a little bit tighter, 1.0, 1.0. 
and this is for loose formation 2.0 2.0 as i often point out on this if you need to go and uh, understand what all this is at the top of the file it explains what each of these numbers and each of these lines represent the other thing we can do is change this line down here you can see it says disciplined now which it didn't before it just said normal most of these units will be normal on here but i want it to be disciplined now and actually i can also change how much it is trained so we go for highly underscore trained we're now hopefully just going to make sure that they're a little bit better at putting off this particular formation now of course this isn't going to make it perfect we're really looking at marginal gains here but these are a few small things which will hopefully make this more satisfying i do have two more little tricks on my sleeve that might just give us the marginal gains that we're looking for so underneath soldier i'm going to add a new line called officer now this was used a lot more in Rome Total War than Medieval 2. In fact in Medieval 2 I don't think there's a single unit in here which actually uses the officer line but the game is happy for you to do it. The only thing you need is to go and grab yourself one of the models from this line down the bottom here and that's the same for whichever unit you use. You just need to grab something from this line. So I'm going to take this particular model here musketeers underscore UG1 and along here I just need to tab a couple of times get it in line and paste that in. So, I can actually have three officers. So I'm going to paste that in a couple more times. So now we have three extra men in the unit. And also, I'd like to think with more officers that perhaps they'll be shooting more in unison. That's probably just for my headcanon, to be honest. But you never know. It might just make a small difference. The other thing that we can do is change this number here on the stat primary, on the primary weapon, which, of course, is a little gun. So, this is the minimum delay between attacks which is in uh, tenths of a second. So 25 tenths of a second currently. Let's just lower that down to one. Hopefully that will mean that we can shoot a little bit more speedily. So we're going to save this up and let's go and test how this is looking. To test just how well all this works then, I've put them in a little bit of a test condition. We're going to have the Portuguese Musketeers against some French dismounted chivalric knights in a 1v1 and then a 2v2 situation. We're going to begin with the unit set out as it is right at the front line in the same place. And I'm going to put skirmish mode on. Obviously, we have got it so that they won't run off. But for the purposes of the experiment, I'll keep it on because we'll know to pause and have the kill count when the retreat occurs. We can use the same battle map, same time of day, normal difficulty for each of these. And we'll try it with two ranks and three ranks. This may sound a lot and indeed... I have probably done a good 50 or so trials with uh, both the normal and the modded version. So hopefully we have some sort of clear result here. In effect, we have four different tests going on here. So let's take them one by one, shall we? Firstly, we have the three ranks in a 1v1 battle where the original unit scored 48% kills, whereas the modded version killed 52%. So a 4% increase on kills in that battle. When we took the three ranks to a 2v2, interestingly both actually killed less, 41% for the original and 46%, a 5% increase for the modded version. So in ranks of three, the original version is clearly weaker than the modded version, modded version being 4 and 5% better in the 1v1 and 2v2s respectively. But let's move on to the ranks of two this time. The results were a bit more mixed with this one. It must be said, when we had the two ranks 1v1, we found that 58% were killed by the original and 61% killed by the modded. Again, that 3% or so improvement. Strangely, when we tested the 2v2, the original actually did better here. 56% to the modded's 54%. Now... I can't quite put my finger on why this is. There might be an element of the wider unit getting a few more angled hits. But when I tested this myself, I wasn't convinced this was really the reason. It may well just be some variance. Who's to say these units are a mysterious beast? But let's have a look at the overall scores, shall we? Having run this test over 40 times now, I think I can probably give us a result and the originals were killing on average 50% of their enemies, whereas the modded versions were killing 53%, so not a huge increase, 3%. Obviously the modded won 3 out of the 4 different sections of the test, 
So, you know, there is some level of variance going on here, but I think those marginal gains are probably well worth it for our modded friend. I definitely think we're better off by getting rid of the fire by rank. I do like having the option to control that skirmish mode if you want it on or off. And I do like the tighter units, and I like them being a little bit more disciplined. How much of a difference all those things made, it's hard to say. They're obviously all just adding up on top of each other, or at least that's the way it seems. Nonetheless, I think, whilst I don't think we can quite say we've fixed them, we've definitely improved the gun units on Medieval 2. And do remember, this is the early era of guns here, so they're not supposed to be brutally efficient at this point. I think they're pretty darn good. I, I must say, they pretty much slaughter this unit of chivalry ignites every time they approach. So I would probably suggest that they are pretty darn strong. And I don't think they need to be much more strong than this. Nonetheless, I think we got ourselves a clear result. If you were thinking that I'd left the handgunners out, then fear not. There will be a second guide on gunpowder units coming up in the not too distant future. And I can hear you comment section. I am going to look at the two handed bug soon. Hopefully that'll be more like the pipe fix than this mere improvement. But for now, I will leave you. I am Thomas, this is to Nerd, it's the Human, and this has been a guide to improving guns in Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you, and bye bye They're all queuing up to fight them. These are truly the British rebels right here. War cry and charge at the dogs of what are oh, they routing again? <laughs> what are you doing, my silly trumpets? They're actually taking on my reinforcements! <laughs> Welcome to the Rebel Experience, ladies and gents.